The most honorable Elijah Muhammad is a man that is often misunderstood and underrated. Born in 1897 in Sandersville, Georgia, the honorable Elijah Muhammad only finished up to the third grade of school, yet his wisdom, knowledge, and guidance is world renowned. You can judge a tree by the fruit it bears, and you can judge a teacher by the students he produces. Students of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad have consistently rose to eminence and astounded scholars throughout the world. The teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad transformed the boxer known as Cassius Clay into the social advocate and revolutionary Muhammad Ali, who shook up the world. After hearing Elijah Muhammad's teachings, the convict Detroit Red, or Malcolm Little, became Malcolm Big and grew into the legend of Malcolm X. And as Muslims, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us to respect our women. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the best student of Elijah Muhammad, is a man respected all over the earth who has positively transformed millions of lives across America and throughout the world. I come back because I love Africa and I want to see Africa liberated and totally free. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad used four methods of reasoning to prove the multitude of subjects that he taught. He taught us that if something is true, it can be verified with either science, mathematics, scripture, or nature. As a student of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, I'm making this video series called Proving Elijah in order to prove and verify certain information that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught long ago through science. In part one of this Proving Elijah series, I will be addressing a very simple and overlooked statement that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said about the color blue. In the Theology of Time, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says that blue represents untrue. Blue is the color of deception. True in blue. At first, this may seem like a small, insignificant, arbitrary statement. However, upon a deeper analysis, the natural world around us proves that this statement is factually correct. In order to prove this, let's first begin by analyzing light and how our eyes see color. The electromagnetic spectrum is the spectrum of light, or coupled electricity and magnetism, which is characterized by frequency. The surface of an object reflects some colors and absorbs all the other colors. When we see colors in an object, we are actually perceiving the reflected colors. So for example, an apple reflects the light at a particular frequency that we define as red. An object appears black when it absorbs all the frequencies of light, and it appears white when it reflects them all. The reason that you can't see your reflection in a white sheet of paper like a mirror is because the white object actually scatters the light in all different directions while mirrors reflect the light back in the same direction they came from. So how does the human eye work? The retina is covered with millions of light sensitive cells, some like cones and others like rods. These photoreceptors process light into nerve impulses and then it travels through the optic nerve to the brain cortex. The rods are responsible for vision at low light. Cones see higher levels of light and are capable of color vision and are responsible for high spatial acuity. There are three types of cones, short wavelength cones, middle wavelength cones, and long wavelength sensitive cones. Color vision results from comparison between cone responses. The human eye can perceive more variation in warmer colors than cooler ones. This is because almost two thirds of cones process the longer light wavelengths, red, orange, and yellows. So now that we have a basic fundamental understanding of light, frequency, and how our eyes perceive color, why would the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad refer to blue as an untrue color, the color of deception? In nature, many things appear blue at first glance. However, upon a deeper analysis, they are not blue. The easiest and primary examples of this is the sky and the ocean. The sky is blue because the atoms that make up the atmosphere, mainly nitrogen and oxygen, scatter mostly all of the blue light in every direction, more so than the larger wavelengths. The ocean is blue because the longer wavelengths are absorbed more strongly by the water and blue is reflected. However, the sky and the ocean are not really blue. If we were to go up into a plane and capture some of the sky and put it into a jar, we would see that the air is not really blue. Similarly, if we went into the ocean and put some of the water into a jar and examined it, we would also see that it's not really blue. This deception of the color blue can be found frequently throughout nature. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad states that blue is not found anywhere in nature, yet in nature we see many colorful animals that appear to be blue as well. However, unlike the ocean and the sky, it is a trick again. Most of the colors in plants and animals come from pigments, which are chemical substances. 
Carotenoids are natural pigments found in plants and animals. They make carrots orange, beets red, and are responsible for the color of leaves in autumn. Certain animals obtain their pigments by eating foods containing these natural pigments. Baby flamingos are actually gray and become pink by obtaining the carotenoids that they get from the food that they eat. Robins and cardinals get their color from the berries that they eat. However, nature does have complexity and color limitations. You can't turn a flamingo or a brown bird blue by feeding them blueberries. Various plants and animals have developed colors of all sorts. However, blue is very difficult for animals to make. Out of all the animals on earth, there are no known animals with a backbone that have blue pigment. Out of the various peacock feathers, blue eyes, blue frog skin, and more, none are genuinely blue produced by any blue pigment. Blue morpho butterflies are perfect examples of this. They have dull brown and vibrant reflective blue in their wings. However, unlike the dark colors which come from the pigment in their bodies, the blue actually comes from tiny structures on the surface of their wings that are designed to bounce light in the right way to make them appear a vibrant blue. This is called structural color. By certain microscopic structures, light is manipulated to produce the color blue. This structural color differs from pigment colors. Pigment color is the same from all viewing angles, unlike structural color which is the result of iridescence or selective reflection, usually because of multi-layer structures. If the butterfly wings were grinded up, the reflective structures would lose their properties and the dust would appear gray or brown. Different animals have developed different ways to generate the color blue by a trick of light. Some birds use bubble lace keratin in their feathers, which scatters the light to make the feathers appear blue. Some snakes are green by mixing their yellow pigment with their blue structural color. Mostly all of the blue that we encounter in nature is a result of these tricks of light, and this is why blue is the color of deception. It always can be disappeared because that's not the true color of nature or the universe.